Hey everyone, I'm Sean Morley, and today we're gonna to create a spindle using a fourth axis on our Shop Saver CNC. All right, now let's talk about some needs for a fourth axis. Uh, just as an example, years ago, I was working on a historic home historic registry in Minnesota, where we had to duplicate exactly what was there. And it's very specific. Well, in the same way, if you got to recreate a spindle, this house had quite a few of them. The fourth axis on a CNC is a great way to do that. It's repeatable. You could have that spindle scanned digitally, put it right in the software, and you can recreate exactly what you need to do. And it's just a great option. So that being said, we're gonna go through today, we're gonna create a little spindle. We're gonna show you how to mount it. There's several different ways we can do that. In this case, we're gonna create a fixture out of this piece of Baltic birch. We'll pocket something in there. It'll give us exactly what we need. So why don't we get started with that? We got our fixture board all set, cut here. I do want to note, mistake on, a, on my part that we did this in uh, two passes can easily be done in one. So as I mentioned earlier, there's many different ways you could mount your fourth axis. This is just how we chose to do it. Doing this pocket here, we've got two setups. They're perfectly in line. We can use this. We can uh, screw the tailstock and the headstock down and then the vacuum's gonna hold this into place. Now, if you've got a, a CNC with T-slots, you could mount it there. If you're gonna do a lot of fourth axis, you might wanna set it up on the outside and permanently fix it in there where you could remove it, put it right back into the same spot all the time. So let's grab one of these. You'll see how tight we did put this in here. It fits in there just tight enough. We'll be able to slide it in. You know you're not gonna have any movement there. Let's grab the headstock. Should have the same fit here. And it fits right into place. So we'll put screws in there, hold it in there, get our dimensions, get our next file set and ready to go. So let's get started on that. All right, here we are in Aspire. We'll be using that to create our spindle. This is the spindle we're gonna cut on the machine. Just give you an idea what that one looks like. It's nothing special, we just kinda quickly drew something up. Let's start over and I'll show you how to set this up. Uh, we're gonna make sure we click the uh, rotary button here. We can set our diameter. We're gonna make a little change as we move along here. The cylinder surface for our Z zero position at the top of that. And then later I'll show you where we set our Z clearance, make sure that's good to go as well. And we'll do that. I'm gonna make a couple references, just a reference line so we can create our part. And that's just the center of the material. And you'll see why in a second. Now we'll go from the center there up. Let's just go over say two inches and call that good. Now for purposes of just showing this quickly, we're just gonna freehand this and you know, it's not gonna be pretty, but it'll be something, give you an idea how you might go about doing something. And we'll see if in the end it turned out all right. Hopefully it does. So we went just past it we will close that. We do have to trim up a couple lines real quick. That one, if there's one there, and we will trim that. From there, you can see that automatically joined together. We are gonna mirror that. 
create a copy, go to the right. Now we have two parts. We'll shift and click that one and join those vectors together. Now we have one whole part. Let's go to the modeling tab. We're gonna use a two rail sweep. Now when we set up as a rotary, it automatically created a little bounding box here. Select the left side, then the right side. Use selection, click your part and apply. And there's our oversized part. Like I said, it's gonna show it bigger, but let's go to our tool path. Now here, we'll set it um, and we're gonna go half of what our uh, material that we're actually doing is. Now you can see we fit in there. Like I said, it's not anything pretty, but gives you an idea how to do this. This is where your Z gap above material, inch and a half, so we'll clear as it rotates. We're good there. We're using an eighth inch tapered ball nose. Um, for our feeds and speeds, 18,000 inches a minute, or uh, RPM. 325 inches a minute. Now on that, the very first pass, we do slow it down and then we bring the speed back up. That first pass is gonna do, you know, it's using all the bit and gonna cut deep. Hit calculate. And there it is. It applied the tool path. And we can see the lines going across it. So from there, we save our tool path and we're ready to go. Why don't we uh, jump back over to the machine and start cutting this. Now that we've seen in Aspire what we're gonna create, I'll show you how we're gonna put the block in here. We just uh, grabbed a four by four cedar. So we'll set it in, get this close to tight. Come back over to this side. And we marked where we need to be at center. And we'll tighten that up. Double check this. Then we'll set our zero right to the top of the part. That's how we set it in the software. From there, we're ready to start cutting. So why don't we get going? We got it done, it took about an hour. Uh, it turned out really, really well. In my experience, doing something with cedar like this, carving it, it, uh, it tends to tear a little bit, but this is really smooth. It's not gonna hardly require any sanding um, should we use it in an application. Now, this one, we just uh, threw some lines together and wanted to show you how it works. You know, one of the big advantages of a fourth axis like this you could create something that, that uh, has a rope in it or if you had something you want to engrave in or making a baseball bat and doing your own logo in it, something like that, you could do that with this. Where with a lathe, it's just gonna spin and you're not gonna be able to stop it. Here you can do all sorts of applications. So really a, a pretty cool piece of equipment and you saw how easy it was to set up. So if you got some more questions about that, be sure to check us out at ChopSaber.com. 
subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks for watching.